wonderful, wonderful. What's going on, you guys? It's your girl, Ask Ashley, here with another great episode of Monday Night Juice. Tonight's sponsor is, of course, always Markel Bernard. Um, you can go to www.markelbenard.wines.com to get your wine of experiences if you want to order it online, but they also have it at the Brentwood Spirits um, on Winton Road, and they also have it at the State Liquor Store on Roseline. They've also got it at Co 51 and a couple of other places and locations around the city. So make sure that you guys go check out my favorite wine, which is Markel Benai Wines. Tonight's episode, I wanted to talk about finding your purpose. Um, I know a lot of times I'm a little lost as to what should I really be doing? Who am I really? What am I meant to do in this world? And I came across a gentleman um, who I just thought was phenomenal in being able to speak and express um, on ways to really dig deeper in yourself and figure out what your purpose is and finding out who it is that you really meant to be. So I've got Mr. Eugene yes. on the show with me today. Um, I want you guys to share the video, like the video, comment as much as possible. I'm giving you guys some time to come on in. Um, I know usually I like to talk about a hot topic, but it's a hot topic going on in Cincinnati right now that I am just not ready to touch on. My man Nathan Ivy went live about it a little earlier and... I just am going to I'm going to reserve to hold that hot topic until maybe next week so as you guys are coming in please share the video like the video comment as much as possible and let me know that you guys are here do you okay I just want to make sure that you can see that yep. and then if you guys can't hear me as always please just let me know yep. Let me see. okay yep Maddie I see you um, and then if you want you can share it as well um, so tonight I have again Eugene Par it's Partridge. Right? Partridge, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, Eugene Partridge the third. I want to make sure the that third. I put that out there, right? Because I made my son a second, and he's always making sure that I put that <laughs> out there so that there's a distinct difference between who we're talking about. But this man is an innovative corporate leader, a TEDx speaker, an author, a music producer, and I think my favorite thing about him is that he's an amazing father and an amazing husband. Um, he has written, it's two books, two now, books right? Yeah, two All right. Books. Um, and the last book that you just wrote was The Career Fertilizer, which just released um, June 22nd. Yeah, just came out. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. And The Career Fertilizer talks about 17 essential nutrients for career growth and expansion. Mm -hmm. Again, something that knowing yourself enough to know what you need to do to get you to the next level. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. awesome. Um, so again, as you guys are coming in, please share the video, like the video, and comment as much as possible so that I know that you guys are here. All right, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Partridge. Well, let's see. Um, so you, you've hit on some of the major things. So of course, uh, family man, uh, father of three daughters, uh, been married about 12 years now. Um, uh, my wife, Lakeisha, she may be watching. Uh, what do I do? So during the day, uh, I am the head of procurement at a company called Paycor. Okay. Uh, so I negotiate all of our contracts from multi-million dollar deals all the way down to a couple thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, I'm an author, so I've written two books. Uh, the first one is Daughters and Daddies, The Investment That Matters. So I've got three daughters, so I clearly know a little bit about um, you know that relationship. And you talked about career fertilizer. Uh, I did something pretty cool this year okay. in May. Uh, I did my first TED talk mm -hmm. um, where I talked about uh, the story of giving a kidney to my father when I was 20 years old. Uh, the TED talk is called uh, Giving Life Saved My Life. So mm -hmm. I talk about a concept called intentional vibrancy, mm -hmm. uh, which is focused on living each day full of energy and life. And so that was a really cool experience. Um, you know, very humbled to be on that stage um, and to have a message like that syndicated around the world. So and I'm also a music producer as well. So. Uh, I'm, I'm a musician at my church, but also write uh, gospel music. I've been able to write for a couple you know, major gospel artists. Uh, so. What was that? D Dorinda? Yeah, Dorinda. Dorinda Clark Hall. Yes, yeah, yes. so I was able to, to write for her, and I've got some more music uh, coming out later this week, this year, but I okay. can't tell you who yet. Uh, so doing a few things with my life, you know, trying to maximize every talent I have. All right, so, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, when you started off with your book, uh, you said it's Daddy's. Yeah, daughters and daughters daddies. Daughters and daddies. The investment that matters. Okay, yeah. so touch on that a little bit. So yeah. is it because I, I I love when um, we come together and figure mm -hmm. out ways to to financially educate our children. Yes. Because I did not have that yeah. growing up. Yeah. So there were so many things that hit me mm -hmm. at a later age. Yeah. You know, well, first mm -hmm. thing obviously that hit me as soon as I turned eighteen, I'm like, what? I get free mm -hmm. money? Right. Clearly, it's not free money, but <laughs> you know what I mean. So, yeah. um, what was the inspiration behind that? 
So uh, it's interesting. So early on in my career, my wife was working a job where she worked a little bit later in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I would leave the office and I would come home and I would have these three small little women that I had to take care of, mm -hmm. right? So I would have to cook for them, I would have to change diapers, bathe them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and during that time, we had really built a serious bond. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really close with my daughters. I'm trying to be intentional in their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to really learn like, okay, I, I know how I can move their emotions. I know how I can motivate them, all that kind of stuff. And I realized, especially in our community, um, it's really tough to find um, fathers that will actually talk about what it means to be a father. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us don't really know. You know, we'll, you know, I'm learning I, as you guys exactly. are going too. I yeah. had a wonderful example of a, uh, of a father, and I saw, you know, how, how to really be a good dad. And I'm like, you know what? I want to kind of reciprocate that. Because mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, he passed when I was 20 years old. So I'm like, well, you know, let me honor him by being a great dad. And so, um, had those um, those years with those my, my daughters and build that relationship. I said, hey, let's put this in a book and start a conversation, um, especially amongst you know black men. The first chapter, um, the the name of it is the cry of a mad black man, mm -hmm. and I talk about why a lot of times men are not able to be great fathers because they're mad about what's going on in society. They're mad that they're not able to uh, be successful. They're mad that they, because they can't provide effectively for their families. And I really dig deep into the importance of being a great example uh, to a daughter. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. If they wanted to purchase that book, what would they? It's on Amazon. Amazon. Uh, Amazon. It's on Amazon in print and an ebook. Okay. So. And how long has that been out? Uh, let's see. I released that in March of 2017. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. It's, it's a quick read, about 120 pages. It won't take you too long. It won't take you too long. Make <laughs> sure you support another black man here in Cincinnati. Um, I, I, I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Th and they wrote it, they kind of, you know, was like really heavily involved. So, you know, you. I, yeah, I would sit down, you know, and I, I put together some concepts and I'd kind of run it past my oldest. You know, she, she gets things a little bit more. My younger two really are still trying to figure out the world, mm -hmm. you know, because I've got an 11 year old, seven year old, and a five year old. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the concepts that I wrote in there, I'm applying them, I'm using them. My daughters are growing, they're doing wonderful in school. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think the concepts work. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, you touched on the TED, TEDx, TED mm -hmm. Talks conversation that you had. Um, those of you that have not had the opportunity to see it, I will post it in the comment section of this video because it is phenomenal. It is a well-invested eight minutes of your time. <laughs> well invested eight minutes of your time mm -hmm. um, and you did talk about you know um, how giving a kidney to mm -hmm. your dad really yeah. saved your life mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that really stuck out for me is something that you mentioned and you talk, talk, talked about um, what did you call it uh, intentional, intentional vibration, yeah, intentional vibrance, yeah. Um, vibrancy yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. where did that concept come from it's funny so I was cutting grass I do a lot of thinking when I'm cutting my grass and um, I thought about so my father I gave him a kidney. He passed 42 days after that surgery. And, uh, but during that 42 days, he was a totally different man. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, what, what, what happened? What really went on? Well, what happened was that he was given a new chance to live. And so he was living each day with a new intentional mindset to have a good attitude, to be positive, to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I was just, I was cutting grass and, the word intentional and vibrancy came to me and I'm like wow IV and we're talking about the fact that I gave a kidney we're talking about things from a medical perspective and giving a shot of IV giving mm -hmm. yourself a shot of IV every day you know waking up every day to live full of energy and life and how that was a choice because right. he even after that situation he could have made a decision to you know just still be you know upset with life but he was like I have a new chance to live and so I'm going to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got out of those 42 days. And it, it, that whole process was worth it just for that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Is that something that your wife and your daughters kind of share with you in that process too? Yeah. I mean, of course, they're, you know, affected by what affects me. Yeah. So um, and it's funny because for many years I didn't have a conversation about this. I didn't mm -hmm. talk about it much. And uh, this year, uh, it's funny because I was meeting with the National Kidney Foundation actually earlier today, um, you know, talking about partnering with them uh, of how to get this message more syndicated. 
and uh, they're supporting me. And, and as I you know have this conversation, they're one hundred percent supportive. So That's awesome. I love it. That is awesome. Um, and it's it's important to me to make sure. And I I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but my last four shows have showcased the excellence of black men. Um, for some reason there is this misconception that there's that 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 we as women like we're killing it don't get me wrong we are but so are our men and um, when I came across Eugene's profile and um, I think the first time I actually saw it is when you had your book signing for career fertilizer mm-hmm. and then I started looking into so many of the other things that you did and were involved with it and then I came across this Instagram page and my mind was blown wow. just by the positivity like I go to your page every day wow I'm hungry. Um, just the positivity, the mm-hmm. inspiration, um, and you can tell, I, I love the word intentional vibrancy because yeah. you can tell when you speak that it is intentional. Yes, it is. So that is super dope. Yeah. I, I, I'm Thank super you. excited I about that. It. Um, so we're going to touch on our topic a little bit, and I, I want to start with purpose. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand what it means to have a purpose, mm-hmm. to walk in their purpose, to live in their purpose, yeah. um, and so I kind of want to touch on that. First off, by asking, what does what does purpose mean to you? Yeah. Well, to me, um, and I love these types of conversations, but to me, uh, purpose is like the reason for living. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we got these jobs. You know, we go out here, we get educated, we work these nine fives, we to do all these things. But what is the reason for that? Right. And I think each person has a different reason for living. Right. Now. If you were to ask me what my purpose is, I feel like I'm on the earth to inspire and influence millions of people to live their full God-given potential. That's kind of like my thing. Like, you have so much potential that's backed into you. Like all the potential is placed into a seed. You know, the, the trees in the seed. It's like I love to help people break out of that seed. Absolutely. That's just something I love to do. So that's why. I, the content that I put on Instagram is always positive. I'm always speaking to you, I'm prodding, I'm trying to get you to think bigger because that's my purpose, you know. And so it's like, what's your reason for living? What what makes you get up in the morning? What causes you to jump out of the bed in the morning? And when you really find that, you know you found your purpose. So what about when people are like, well, because um, I have a couple of other friends who are amazing speakers mm-hmm. and. One of, one of them, um, her name is uh, Dalkeisha Bryant, mm-hmm. and um, she talks about finding your why. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So what about when people are like, uh, well, my children are my, my why. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. your why and your purpose are two different things, right? Right. right. So can you touch on that for a little yeah, bit? Yeah. I mean, so so the purpose, once you find what your purpose is, like, okay, why am I here, um, or, or, or what is my reason for living? you then have to have something that forces you to live, right? You can, you can have that discovery, but you know the reason you want to fulfill that purpose is your why. So I don't wanna just be influential and be successful just for myself. I wanna do that because I wanna have wealth for my kids. I wanna do that so I have wealth for my wife, you know? Um, so it's almost like it's the gas, it's like, you know, the. The, the potential is that car. You can go anywhere you want in that car. You can go anywhere you want in that jet. But if you have no fuel in it, it's just going to be a nice looking piece of metal. So you have this wonderful purpose that you look at. But if you have no fuel, if you have no why, you're not going to push it. Just, yeah. It's just there. It's just there. Okay, yeah. I got you. Um, I, I'm so happy that you broke it down that way because I, for the longest time, was unsure of what my purpose was. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew my why because mm-hmm. I have children yeah. and I'm a single mom, mm-hmm. you know, so I knew why, mm-hmm. but I didn't, it was almost like, you know, your purpose, but you have, you struggle yeah. with the why yeah. I knew the why, but I struggled with the purpose. Right. And it wasn't actually until I started Monday night juice and mm-hmm. my ass Ashley brand that mm-hmm. I figured out my purpose. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful thing to know what your purpose is mm-hmm. because when you don't know your purpose, you're completely lost. Yeah. You are literally just a soul, just kind of wavering around, yeah, yeah. trying to figure out where you fit in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to have this conversation because I need for people to understand the importance of knowing what your purpose is, mm-hmm. so that you don't feel that lost. Right, right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so talk about what it means to walk in your purpose once you've discovered it. Because yeah. there's sometimes 
you know, we can know, like, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is what I believe I'm meant to do. But I have no idea how I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think it takes courage. Once you, once you find out what you're supposed to do, it takes courage to actually walk it out. Because a lot of times, to be honest with you, your purpose may not have a beaten path. You know, what you're doing may just be something that's totally new and totally different. And uh, you gotta have the courage to do that. And a lot of times, because folks are not you, they are not gonna understand what you're doing. So, you know, I can remember, you know, uh, uh, you know, being early on and you know, trying to inspire folks and do all this kind of stuff that, you know, uh, folks would, you know, make fun. I will never forget this. I'll tell this quick story. So, in my apartment, my first apartment, um, we had affirmations that are vision wall. We had affirmations and stuff on the wall. This is before affirmations and stuff became big and everybody was right. talking. And, uh, you know, one of our friends had come by our house and I had mentioned that there was a company I was going to work for and I was going to make X amount of dollars, blah, blah, blah. And they came in and they, they laughed at that. They are like, you're going to do what? You're going to do what? And this is when I'm, you know, doing my inspiration. I'm really trying to pump folks up and I have people laughing at my purpose. And it took courage for me to say, okay, well, you can laugh, but I'm still going to do this. Right. So I, I think what folks have to understand is that when you're walking this thing out, it's going to be lonely at first. Like, folks are not going to respect your purpose until it becomes successful. That's just how folks are. That's the reality. Yeah. I mean, your your purpose is not going to matter to them until it helps them. And and it takes time to work that out, and you got to have the courage to walk it out until you get it. Okay. I'm going to see this really quick yeah. just so I can read a couple of comments that you received. Um, Christopher says that you're a great dad. Um, oh, wow. And Ash, Ash Cash says uh, she wants you to preach. <laughs> Jamil says, um, uh, he says, peace to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, oh, Lord, they got a couple other comments on mm -hmm. here, too. Um, so when you talk about the loneliness, yeah. right? Yeah. Talk about the loneliness of once you've discovered the purpose mm -hmm. and you know that this is the path that you want to mm -hmm. take. Um, what what would you say to someone who is kind of going through that right now? Yeah. That 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 loneliness mm -hmm. that you know because sometimes <clears throat> I find that we rely on others mm -hmm. too much. Yeah, you know what I mean? We do. Instead of like sometimes when we find that purpose and we don't have our why, we would rely on our closest mm -hmm. friends yeah. or family members or those yeah. that are you know very near and dear to us mm -hmm. to kind of gas mm -hmm. us up. Mm -hmm to get through that and not realizing yeah. and I asked this question before not realizing that you are going to lose some people along the way yeah. of, of, of that mm -hmm. journey yeah um, so can you kind of touch on like what yeah. would you say to someone in that so in let the me, headspace let me back into that from the, the latter part of your question if you don't lose people along the way you're not walking in purpose mm. because um, if you are still able to be around the same people that you were around five years ago or ten years ago, um, there, there's there's going to be some tried and true, absolutely. But if if your circle is not changing, if your surroundings if your surroundings are not changing, I don't I personally don't feel like you're walking in purpose because to walk in purpose is a lonely road. You know, it just is. And and to get to the first part uh, of your question, um, I spend quite a lot, quite a bit of time thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I spend time reading, um, filling my mind with um, things that I need to learn in order to walk in my purpose. So I listen to a lot of inspirational um, audio books and things of that nature. And you just have to constantly feed yourself while you're trying to go down that path. You've got to keep your, your mind high. Yeah. Um, because you're doing something that's hard. Like I said, you know, a lot of times your purpose doesn't have a beaten path. It doesn't have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Um, and you should be glad when it doesn't because that means that you are a trailblazer. You're shaking things up, yeah, right? Yeah, a lot of times folks folks want to be a trailblazer, but they don't want to walk the trail alone. Right. So you can't blaze a trail if there's folks that are ahead of you. Right. You know, so it's like you've got you to see, does this purpose matter enough to me? And you can be honest with yourself. A lot of times folks have discovered their purpose and they don't walk in it. Mm -hmm. And the reason they don't is because they don't have the courage to be alone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just see if it, if it matters enough to you and, and you'll do it. I'm glad that you touched on the fact that if your circle has not changed, then you're not truly walking on your purpose. Mm -hmm. Because I used to, um, I used to be teased mm -hmm. by some people mm -hmm. um, 
when they would be like, Ashley, you always around a group of like your mm-hmm. your friends never change. They, right. or they never stay the same. Mm-hmm. I have one friend who I've been friends with mm-hmm. since my ninth grade year mm-hmm. of high school. Yep. Outside of that, everybody has changed. Yep. Now it may have been a falling out. It may have just mm-hmm. been a separation of ways. It may have not had anything to do with anything, and we're just we just I just went this way, you went that way. It's yep. no love lost. Yep. But my group of friends now Mm -hmm. are totally different than my group of friends from five years ago. Mm -hmm. They're totally different from the group of friends that I've had 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And I used to feel some type of way about Mm -hmm. that, about myself. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I'm not a good friend or Mm -hmm. maybe, um, you know, I don't know how to keep friends because Mm -hmm. I'm not a good friend. Mm -hmm. And it it never dawned on me that my circle of friends are changing because I'm evolving into yeah. who I'm meant to be. Absolutely. Um, so I'm so glad that you touched on that. That's, I mean, that's, that's so, major. It's so key for folks to understand because and, and this is how I qualify it. Um, I have brothers. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't grow up with blood brothers, but I have folks that have become brothers. Brothers don't necessarily change if they're or sisters don't necessarily change if they're really connected to your purpose. Friends will come and go. Right. There will maybe some folks that actually turn into being so connected with you that they go with you wherever you go. Mm-hmm. And so kudos to you for having the courage to keep walking out your life and not being stuck. Because a lot of people get stuck in friendship. Yeah. And you get stuck in that friendship and then you give up a lot of your goals and dreams so that you have people around. So it's, it's, it's good that you're doing that. I feel so much better about that. <laughs> All right. One of the questions that we have is, do you have any audio book suggestions? Oh, I have so many. Um, I have so many. Number one, everyone that's listening, download the app uh, called Scribdy if you haven't. Uh, it gives you access to all, all kinds of books that you can listen to audio or you can read. Uh, but the first book I would suggest for anyone is called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. That's by Joseph Murphy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it totally changes your mindset. Uh, uh, you know, it talks about the subconscious mind and things you're able to do. Um, you know, uh, our, our lives are ran through the subconscious mind. Like right now, we're sitting here talking and we're breathing, but we're not telling our brain to do that. Um, you want to get to the place where like your vision and goals are able to work without you telling them to do that. That's a great book. I love a book called uh, As a Man Thinketh by uh, James Allen. I like a lot of old books. Um, another book called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie was written in 1936. I'm talking about people like Charles Schwab, um, you know, F.W. Woolworth, folks that were multi-millionaires and billionaires read that book to become who they were. So, you know, those those three books right off the top of the dome. Make sure that you guys are writing this down <laughs> because this is not a brother who just like talks about it and does not live. That's right. In that manner, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. Um, go to his Instagram. He talks about how him and his wife just saved or, or paid off a whole bunch of yeah. debt because he knows what he's talking about. Sure did. So make sure that you guys are writing down these key facts that he is giving you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Eugene. Do you mm-hmm. think that everybody has a purpose? Absolutely. Um, the only people that don't have a purpose, well, I'm not going to say that. Uh, and even animals have a purpose. Think about it. I mean, um, what is the purpose of a bird? Bird flies. You know, fish, they swim. You know, everyone has, you're not placed on this earth if you don't have a purpose. Even algae has a purpose. Insects have a purpose that all works together. So everybody does have a purpose. It's just a matter of, do we want the mm-hmm. purpose that we have been given? Mm-hmm. That's that's the true question. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, the career fertilizer, is mm-hmm. that also on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, Scribdy, every digital bookstore it's on. If you had, no, this is what I asked. Mm-hmm. One, what was the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Okay. And two, what is the best piece of advice you would ever give? Oh, this is good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the best piece of advice I've ever been given. Um, I think I would have to say um, a focus in on constantly learning. Mm. Um, so I have bachelor's degree and a master's degree but those degrees don't matter if I stop learning after I graduate so when I got out of college I've learned more by the continued education which, which they call non-formal education I talked about that in the book mm-hmm. the difference between formal and non-formal I've learned more and produced more success from non-formal education which doesn't require you to have a grade take an exam all that kind of stuff you have to have um, an intentional mind to do that um, 
and folks telling me that I need to always be in a posture of learning is the best advice I've ever gotten. Um, now, the best advice I would ever give is to constantly stay in a <laughs> posture of learning, okay? Um, and, and I mean that. I mean, as soon as you think that you have um, arrived, that's when you start to fail. And it doesn't matter what level you get to. You can be a multi-millionaire. You can have all kinds of influence. But if you stop learning, that's when you be, you know, you start to fail. And so I think that would be the best advice. Awesome. Both sides. All okay. right. So tonight we have learned the purpose is our, mm -hmm. what are we doing here? Right. 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 Um, what do we believe that we are meant to do on this earth? Mm -hmm. Um, and then our why is the gas behind that. Right. Our why is what's going to push us to move into our purpose mm -hmm. and walk through our purpose. Mm -hmm. When you are in your purpose, make sure y'all writing these down because we just got this from my man Eugene. <laughs> when you are in your purpose, expect for it to be alone. Mm -hmm. for a, even if it's for a little bit, mm -hmm. just expect for you to be alone and that is mm -hmm. okay. One of the things that I really struggled with, mm -hmm. um, and it may have been just a result of of, of daddy issues mm. or whatever the case may be mm. is the idea of being alone. I yeah. hated it. Yeah. I yeah. hated the concept of being alone. Yeah. I still slightly hate the concept mm. of being mm -hmm. alone. Yeah. I feel like collaboration and, 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 mm. and unity is just so, yeah. it means so much to my core. So mm. the idea of being by myself is just like, I don't like to do that, yeah. but it's important for you to evolve yeah. and grow. Well, let me um, and encourage you on that piece. Uh, PJ Morton says it best uh, when it's all said and done they're going to want to come okay that's I'm just going to be honest with you uh, there were times where I was feeling lonely I was feeling like nobody um, cared about what I was doing I had friends uh, family that talked about me and all that kind of stuff but when they started seeing everything flip when they started seeing uh, the influence and the success it is now totally flipped yeah. and so it's like you, now you want to be alone. Yeah. Now you want to find a sp <laughs> spot to where you can get away. Um, and so, but it, it just takes that consistent walking in purpose. And just like PJ said, you know, when it's all said and done, don't come. All right. All right. I'm going to hold on to that. <laughs> definitely going to hold on to that. Um, Eugene, is there anything else that you'd like to say to my viewers before we close out tonight? Well, I mean, I'll just say this. I mean, <clears throat> I think what you're doing is great. Thank you. Um, I think we need to have more conversations like this. And I love the fact that you're showcasing black men. And I'd like to, um, you know, the last couple of shows, you know, showcasing black men, I'd just like to encourage my fellow brothers, you know, to continue to keep winning out here, uh, to keep building out here, um, build in the face of folks hating, uh, build in the face of uh, the hardship that we see in our communities, uh, because we need more of us. Uh, and as we continue to succeed, we'll continue to lift up our culture. So. Um, thank you so much just for the opportunity just to come and share a couple minutes on this platform. I, I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me. I know it's a Monday and it's been raining all day and it's kind of a drag, but y'all still come and you still kick it with me and I really appreciate it. Um, I am debating on a show next week. So if you guys have any ideas, I'm open for it. I'm also debating on just kind of hanging out and spending some time with my kids too. So... If you guys have any show ideas or any topics that you guys want me to talk about, please shoot me an inbox, DM me, or shoot me an email, one ask Ashley, two E's, no Y, at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another great episode of Monday Night Juice. And I'll see